Have you ever thought about modifying your beginner bike? You might say, yeah, I wanna put on new tires, exhaust, flash the ECU, do a bunch of crazy stuff. But then you think, oh, do I really wanna spend that much money modifying my first bike? Well, we have here with us today a Royal Enfield Continental GT provided to us by a fan of the channel who he has spent quite a bit of money on this motorcycle. This motorcycle was modded to the nth degree and I really wanted to check it out because we have had an interceptor back last year that we gave away and I wanted to see does it actually make sense to do all these different mods on this bike and have we actually really improved this bike meaningfully? Let's find out today if you can actually overspend on your beginner bike mods. So let's cover everything that's been done to this motorcycle. We'll start off with the front end here. You see that this bike is featuring the Conti Sport Attack tires. This is a sport touring tire. It's gonna provide a lot more grip over the OEM rubber that this bike was equipped with, which was either, if memory serves me correctly, the Zoom Cruise or a Pirelli that's not really a Pirelli. This is a great tire to put on. This machine features 18s front and rear, so it's kind of hard to find rubber for this bike, which is why a lot of people end up swapping 17s and getting proper sticky tires on this thing. The biggest mod that this bike has on it, by far the trickest part, is this fork. This right here is the stock fork tube, but what Keith has done is he contacted the guys over at Traction Dynamics and they revalved, respringed, and completely redid the internals on this fork. It's now fully adjustable for rebound, compression, and preload, so I really wanna see what the front end's gonna feel like. Keith will also drop the gauges here a little bit because he's going for this overall slammed kind of cafe racer look. You see here he's got Woodcraft clip-ons on this bike. That is a pricey part, very race-derived. And also here as well, a Brembo RCS 15 master cylinder, which I'm a big fan of. You get way more feel through the lever, way more positive engagement on the bike in the terms of the braking forces as well. This is a mod that I highly recommend people do. I have done this on my desert sled, on my race bike, and all kinds of different applications. I love these master cylinders. He's also put in a new set of brake pads here at the front as well, kind of just improving the stopping performance of this motorcycle. And you can see here as well, um, there is a Brembo clutch lever that uh, Keith told me that obviously Brembo only makes hydraulic versions of this side. So it's a inspired by Brembo uh, clutch lever. We'll, we'll just put it that way. Don't look too close. <laughs> So moving on further in the bike, the motor is stock. So Keith told me that he didn't want to do the 865 big bore kit, all that stuff that you'd see in the BTR bikes, the build train race bikes in Moto America. That gets these up to about 75 horsepower. So this motorcycle's probably making the same factory stock, 50 or five horsepower, something like that. But coming off of the bike, we have this really nice Zard slip-on exhaust. This was actually a pretty pricey piece of kit. Keith told me this ran him about 800 90 bucks, so that was not cheap to get done. Here at the rear end as well, we see this YSS pair of shocks. This is gonna provide much better feel for the rear as well. This is a very common shock modification, one that we actually wanted to do on our Royal Enfield when we had it, but we just simply ran out of time on our machine. So I'm really excited to see how this bike is gonna ride, but I wanna pull out in front of the garage and hear how it sounds with these pipes. Then we're gonna swing a leg and see if all these improvements have made a meaningful difference to this platform. All right, let's start her up here, folks. Bike is in neutral, clutch in. Nice little purr. You guys will see the baffles are out of the exhaust here, so it's gonna have a nice little pop and crackle. That's pretty good. I've always loved how these sound. They're very Bonneville, very classic, very cool. I'm gonna get geared up, gonna go take it for a spin. Now let's be honest with ourselves, guys. Some of us don't ride as much as we'd like to. We snap up some silly bikes on Craigslist and then they end up sitting in a garage for a whole long time because guess what? You've only got the one butt you can put in a saddle at one time. So why are we paying to insure our motorcycles fully when they're just sitting there not being used? Unless maybe you're a Harley rider and the bike's just gonna lay itself down while it's in the garage. I'm not sure, but that's where Voom Insurance can come in. Voom is a pay per mile insurance company that's sure to save you a bunch of money if you own multiple bikes or you just don't ride as much as you'd like to. 
You can save up to 60% versus traditional insurance with policies as low as 50 bucks per year. And the best part, there's no tracking hardware or software required. All you have to do is take a photo of your odometer and submit it to them. If you're a seasonal rider, a multiple bike owner, or you just don't rack up that many miles, Voom could be a great cost saving solution for you. Voom is only available in these current states. Arizona, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Missouri, Texas, and Tennessee. The riding season is just around the corner, so why don't you start the season off with a big savings on your insurance? Maybe you could get yourself that exhaust you've been eyeing. Click the link in my description down below or in the pinned comment to get yourself a free quote. If you're a rider that lives in a colder state, you own multiple bikes, or you just don't get out and ride as much as you used to, Voom could be a great option for you. You're probably overpaying on your traditional insurance, so click the link down below and get a free quote to see if paper mile insurance is right for you with Voom. All right, folks, bike is on, swinging a leg. Continental GT is uh, very sporty, very long, but honestly, the clip-ons, they're not that low, despite being underneath the triple. The triple is really raised up because of the headstock of the bike is actually all the way up here. So, go ahead and put it in first. Nice snickety gearbox. Check our three, we're good to go. Lots of experience on the Interceptor 650. Put a lot of miles on that bike. I famously track tested the thing, if you all remember. I took it out bone stock on the Zoom Cruise tires, which was really quite something. These are such sweetheart little bikes, man. <laughs> I love them. They're actually really nice. So the thing about upgraded suspension, a lot of people think that in order for suspension to be good or to really work, it's got to be super stiff. If it's rock hard, that's how you know it's good suspension. But that's actually not the case. It's about the adjustability and the refinement of the package, right? Like, I really want to see how this bike is handling bumps and undulations in the road, how it's rebounding, how it's set up. Uh, that has way more to do with the valving and the spring choice inside. Um, you know, all this stuff really matters so much more than just how stiff the bike is. So I actually want to go into the braking here. That's so much better than stock. I'm hardly getting any dive on the front end. It feels very controlled. That's really, really nice. And another big thing that people don't think about with uh, actual handling and suspension is the tire choice, you know? I think about on a bicycle, the tires, on a, on a road bike anyways, I know for mountain bikes, the suspension, all that, but for a, a bicycle, the tires are really your suspension. It's really the comfort of the ride. So this Conti Sport Attack is a, a softer compound tire than the uh, original bias plies that this bike comes with provides a, a more supple ride, you know? It provides more grip, a little more suppleness, and it's, it's really nice, and I, I can feel that difference. This is a much more refined package overall. Uh, but yeah, just a super quick impression taken off from Yami Noob HQ, and uh, I'm gonna report back to you guys. Cruising at about 70 on this highly modified Continental GT. Seeing how this suspension package works in the higher speed stuff, highway speeds and seeing how it handles, I really like this dude. It's a big difference over the stock setup for the Interceptors and the Continentals. You can really tell this package is way nicer. This is riding much closer to a Triumph Thruxton or something like that. It's going down the road with a lot of poise. It's kind of modulating those bumps. It's not getting itself out of sorts. It's not harsh in any way. Uh, Keith was telling me he set it up pretty soft and I like it. I like the way this feels a lot. Uh, Keith really spent the time on the important controls here. It's the suspension, it's the brakes, it's the tires. Like, that's the important stuff. And yeah, he put on a slip-on exhaust because you, you want to hear the thing. But at the same time, you know, he forewent or foregoed, I don't know what the word would be, he did not, <laughs> uh, you know, do the crazy 865 kit and all that kind of stuff. So smart money was put into this bike. I'm gonna get it on the twisties and see how I feel now too. Okay, getting the Continental GT with this trick suspension on the side of the tire with the Conti Sport Attack rubber fitted to it. Let's have some fun, let's see how she does. 
running that casual street pace. We got torque to carry us up this hill because we're on a Continental GT. Nice 650 parallel twin. A lot of grunt from this motor. I'm really nice and low and in the pocket of this bike. I like the ergonomic setup. Oh, that front end is good, dude. <laughs> I'm not getting much dive. It's really controlled. I should have put a zip tie on this bike and see what kind of uh, front end suspension travel we're getting, but <laughs> we're not on track, so that'd be a little bit silly. Down the hill here, into the red line a little bit, testing those brakes. Yeah. RCS 15 doing the Lord's work. I love these master cylinders. They make a big difference on the bike. Now, one thing that I am noticing is the Continental GT seems to resist uh, quick flicking, right? It doesn't seem to really like darting over on the side of the tire. That could be down to a couple factors. Number one, this bike is a little heavier, right? It's not always gonna be really quick and nimble and all that stuff. But I think also this motorcycle, um, you know, the tire profile is definitely gonna inform that as well. A more narrow V-shaped tire falls over to the side a little bit easier. But I really think it's these clip-ons. I think these are really small clip-ons and I would like a little bit wider and more leverage. If I was out here, I think I could flick this bike over a little bit faster. I think that would make a big difference as well too. But overall, this is very impressive from the Continental GT. This is a big improvement over the Interceptor. I mean, that, that line is being held very steady here. And granted, whenever you're leaned over, it's more of the frame rather than the suspension because the suspension can't work laterally like that. It works a little bit, but handling bumps like that is really nice. Now, did that magically turn this motorcycle into an R6? Well, no, you know, it's still an infield. It's still this kind of lumpy, low kind of thing. But I, this is a huge improvement. I'll tell you that right now makes the bike really fun to hustle around. Yeah, that's good. Cut the line straight here. Yeah, that's a ton of fun. You can actually have a lot of fun in the twisties with this thing now. And it's like I said, it starts to resemble more of a Triumph Thruxton with a pretty uh, chill engine. You know, that's kind of what it's turned into. All right, folks, we've put on quite a few miles on the end field today. Let's uh, pull off and wrap up our thoughts on whether or not it is worth it to spend so much money modifying a beginner bike. Let's do it. Now that's a fun bike. The changes that Keith has made on this thing has actually made a pretty big difference. This motorcycle feels surprisingly close to a Triumph Thruxton. I'm actually really surprised. Love the way it handled, love the way it feels, makes a great sound. But it begs the question, should you really spend $3,500 to make this into what it is after spending seven grand to buy it? Well, ultimately, it's your motorcycle. Do whatever you want to do with it. If you're going to keep this thing for a long time, it's only money, you know? Like, if it brings you joy to modify your things and to get them to be a certain spec and you want them to be a certain way, that makes more of a difference than saving 1500 bucks, two grand, or whatever it is. The net value of the experience you take away from modifying and enjoying your motorcycles is worth it, in my opinion. Now, if you're just trying to be the Mr. Ma value maximizing all that stuff motorcyclist, well, you wouldn't have bought a Royal Enfield in the first place. You would have bought a $500 Ninja 250 and then flipped it for a grand and tried to make money on it. So I don't really think this bike would really fit that type of person. I really enjoyed riding this bike today. It was a ton of fun. It looks beautiful, sounds great, looks good, rides good rather, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Thanks so much for Keith to uh, supplying this bike for me today to ride around. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on whether or not it makes sense to modify your bike so extensively. I think it kind of does. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.
I got a bone to pick with you. You're out there doing all them dang wheelers on your H2s and your Groms and your high boosts and all that. That ain't gonna get you nowhere. You gotta take action. You gotta get yourself fixed up. You gotta find Rossi. You gotta find God. Click this video right here over on Yammy New. You keep watching yourself these videos. You're gonna get fixed. You're gonna get saved. You're gonna get fixed today.